If there's anything that'll encourage you to go to the doctor sooner rather than later, it'll be the story of an unnamed 43-year-old man from Panama. Hereafter, I'll refer to this poor soul as the patient. Let me warn you now, the descriptions you're about to hear are extreme and might make you sick, so perhaps don't listen to this while you're eating. Now, the patient's story began many years ago, when he was a young man living in Panama. His early medical history is largely unknown, as he either rarely visited the doctor or he never had any medical records in the first place. It's not known what initially caused the health problem that would soon come to dominate his life, but the doctors and surgeons in Texas who treated him suspect that it was an infection of parasitic roundworms which can be spread through mosquito bites. This roundworm infection led to lymphatic filariasis, which is a condition where the worms have embedded themselves in the lymphatic system, plugging it up and preventing the healthy flow of blood and lymphatic fluid. This can lead to edema, where portions of the body, including entire limbs, can swell up with fluid. This can impair movement, and on a cultural level, on a social level, these gross deformations caused by the edema can lead to impaired standing in the community, and this can lead to rejection, social shunning, and isolation. It's pretty terrible in every aspect. Now, the patient suffered from this condition, experiencing lymphatic edema in his legs and scrotum. For some reason, perhaps a fear of doctors or perhaps a lack of ability to pay for treatment, the patient avoided medical care. Unsurprisingly, his condition worsened as time went on. His scrotum swelled until it impaired his movement, forcing him to use a walker to get around. He lived with his mother during this time, and she took care of him as he was largely unable to care for himself. After nearly three decades of enduring this progressively worsening infection, the patient finally sought medical treatment and eventually was rushed into emergency surgery at a hospital in Texas. When he arrived, his condition was critical. He had a fever and rapid heart rate, which are symptoms suggestive of gangrene and sepsis. He had an internal hernia. He had a subcutaneous abscess that was filled with gas. He had ulcers and extensive damage to his kidneys, to his bladder, and to his left ureter. His upper right leg was swollen with fluid, and his scrotum was blackened and engorged to the point where it hung below his knees. Some of the most damaged soft tissue had begun to melt into a rotting, watery juice through a process called liquefactive necrosis. His penis had been buried within the mountain of engorged scrotum flesh. It had completely enveloped his penis, and when nature called, when he had to urinate, the urine had to flow through the enveloping folds of his scrotum. And because of the nature of the edema, there was really no way for him to get in there and dry it up, to, to clean himself up. So, over time, the skin had been chemically burned raw by the near-continual urine exposure, and the exit point the hole where the urine finally seeped out of this engorged mass of scrotal tissue, that exit point was a huge pink-red blossom of blistered, urine-burned skin. I can't even imagine the smell, let alone the pain. The doctors tried to insert a catheter, but under the circumstances, it just it wasn't happening. So they made a surgical slit along the back of the engorged scrotum to insert the catheter there. The patient went through days of intravenous antibiotic treatment to rid him of the sepsis, and he underwent numerous surgeries to repair or remove tissue that had been damaged by necrosis, by infection, or edema, or just raw mechanical damage. They spent days draining fluid from his swollen body parts and deflating the gas-filled abscess. They even tried wound vacuuming, to get some of the dead, rotting tissue and fluids out, but the patient reported that it was too painful. Ultimately, he had to undergo cosmetic and reconstructive surgery to rebuild his penis and perineum. His left testicle was too far gone and had to be removed. His scrotum was so full of fluid that by the time it was removed, 
It weighed close to seven and a half pounds. Now, as horrific and grisly and disgusting as this all is, the story has a happy ending. The patient did not die from his extreme edema, sepsis, and necrosis. His penis, although heavily damaged by the infection and the surgery, was reconstructed, and he retained his right testicle. So, as the doctor said, he was able to be cleaned up and healed, quote, without sacrificing cosmetic and functional outcomes, unquote. So, our 43-year-old patient from Panama will live to see another day, and he will enjoy a future where he can move, walk, and urinate without pain. And perhaps, one day, he can even have children. There's two big lessons to take away from this case. The first lesson is, if you're sick, go see your doctor. Don't wait. Do not be this guy. Don't let your disease progress until you can't walk and your tissue is literally liquefying inside you from the rot. This is a fate you want to avoid, so go see your doctor. If something is wrong, go see your doctor. The second lesson is, you should really appreciate how incredible modern medicine is. I mean, seriously, this guy would have 100% died a slow and agonizingly painful and humiliating death. But because of modern medicine and modern surgery, he was able to avoid this most undignified fate. Because of modern medicine, he'll enjoy a better quality of life, presumably for the rest of his days. So just be thankful that you live in the 21st century. Be thankful for the miracle work that modern doctors and surgeons can do. Now, personally, I haven't ever suffered anything even remotely like this, but even when I go to the dentist or an eye appointment for a routine checkup, I am just so thankful for what modern medicine and modern science can do. Oh.